Is luxury YouTube dead? Am I planning to leave YouTube? This has been a hot topic lately. I've seen lots of videos on this. I tend to avoid commenting on this sort of thing, but I'm going to comment on it today. Stay tuned and I'll tell you why. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. So is luxury YouTube dead? Should everybody leave this space? And why am I talking about this now when I don't usually talk about these things that pop up everywhere? At least I don't think I do. Maybe I do and I'm oblivious to it. Let me know. Here's the thing, this particular topic, it's not new. I've seen it pop up before as recently as a year ago and longer than that ago. It comes up for various reasons and I've been watching some of the people who have been talking about this topic lately in the last week or two and based on what I have seen, the reason it's popped up again now seems to be because of Jerusha. So I watched her video and she was asking, is the luxury YouTube dead? Should I leave YouTube? I being she. And the example she gave was Jeffree Star and someone else. I don't watch him and I don't watch the other person. I'm not even familiar with the other person, so I don't know. But these two apparently giant YouTubers. Are they even in the luxury space? I thought Jeffree Star was a makeup YouTuber. That's how little I know, okay? It's just not my kind of content. But she was saying that people like that who have found so much success on YouTube, for them to leave, to her is a marker that something is going down with YouTube. For their views to be down and for them to leave. I think that's a really strange marker to have to then draw the conclusion that luxury YouTube is dead. First of all, people at that level are doing a lot more than YouTube and I know Jeffree Star has a makeup business and surely that's where most of his money comes from. He's also found fame in other places and to me it makes sense that someone at that level would leave YouTube because you'd be moving on to other things. We've seen lots of other people do that, not necessarily in the luxury space, Face, but Casey Neistat, who was one of the original giant YouTubers, or Liza Koshy, another one of those. And them leaving, these big YouTube stars leaving, it's not an indicator that the platform is dead or the genre they're in is dead. It just means they're evolving. And that is what you have to do on your YouTube channel if you want your channel to be successful and not die. So I went into all that and I forgot to address why I'm talking about this now and haven't talked about it before when people have said luxury YouTube is dying. I'm talking about it now simply because I'm sick of hearing about it. It's along the same lines of all those videos videos that complain about luxury prices, like handbag prices going up. I mean, guys, it's predictable that people are going to feel this way. It's predictable that people are going to leave YouTube. Not everyone becomes a YouTube creator and stays on the platform forever. There's always an end at some point. And the reasons are varied. One of those reasons is that people's views are down. So when somebody gives that reason, I would assume they're more like me, where I see YouTube as a business. It's something where views are important because they and other factors equate to the part of the business that earns income. And when your views go down, so does your income. Now I will say I've watched several videos on this topic lately, but the one that stood out the most to me and the one with whom I most agree by far, I feel like we have exactly the same perspective on this, is The Closet by Connor. And I will have his video linked below because he comes at this topic from the point of view of a YouTuber who who's in it for the business, same as me. So that's part of what I'll be talking about in this video too. If you see your views go down, it could have to do with a number of things, but the primary thing, almost always, is going to be that people aren't interested in your content. So like Connor says in his video, take another business, for example, if you're in business for yourself, off of YouTube and you see your sales drop. You don't blame the entire system. You look at your own business and say, what am I doing wrong? What can I do better? to increase my sales. It's the same thing on YouTube. You don't blame YouTube and say the whole platform or the whole genre is dying. You should look at your own channel, your own content and be like, hey, what am I doing that people don't like? What do people want to see and how can I create that content? 
to get people more interested and engaged and get the views back up. Yes, there are external factors that play into this. YouTube changes their algorithm pretty regularly. And when it comes down to it, it is all about the algorithm. But the algorithm is built to reflect how interested viewers are in your content. So they really go very much hand in hand. If people aren't interested in your content, the algorithm is not going to boost it. Vice versa, if they are, it will, generally speaking. And if views are important to you, and that's one of the reasons you're leaving YouTube, but you're not changing your content, that's on you. Together with that, if you're not using the analytics that YouTube provides to figure out how to best optimize your videos, that's also on you. If on one hand you want the views and you want to see growth on your channel, but on the other hand, you don't treat it like a business, you treat it like a hobby, it's something you just do for fun when you feel like it, chances are you are not going to see that growth because that's not how YouTube works. You have to look at your analytics. You have to use the analytics, implement them in what you're doing in your channel. Like you can't just upload any time. You need to look at when are the best days and the best times of the day to upload. You have to look at what video content you have that is most popular and least popular and look for trends among that content. And you have to look way beyond unboxings and hauls. Those are staple things, but that's not gonna keep your channel alive because everybody does that. You have to find a niche. It's hard to do, but that is one thing that would make your channel grow because it makes it more unique. You have to pay attention to trends over time too. I've been doing YouTube for years now and I keep track of a lot of data related to it and I see trends over the course of a year where sometimes views are always down at this time of year or views are always up this time of year or sales are down or up. And I use that information to create content that, for example, in a time when views and sales are usually low, I create content that tends to boost that. You just have to think about it like a business if you want the growth. I would also say that the people who say luxury YouTube is over, it's pretty Pretty dismissive of all the smaller channels that are out there. For example, with Jerusha, not knocking her and not saying that she said this because she didn't, but when Jerusha started, there were only a couple of people, a handful of people doing luxury handbag channels. Now, countless new people pop up all the time, especially during COVID when people are home, a lot of people are still home which blows my mind because I've been back at work since October of 2020. So I'm, I'm so used to being in the office, it always kind of surprises me when I find out people are still working from home. But anyway, because of all that, so many people, hundreds if not thousands of people have started luxury handbag channels. Some are serious about it, some aren't. Some just do it for fun, some do it because they want to grow a business. And to say that luxury YouTube is dead ignores that sector of the YouTube creator community completely, because that's a huge thriving part of the business. Luxury YouTube is not dead. I would say that all those channels is one of the reasons that some people's views may be down, just because there's so much more competition. And that does make it more difficult, as with any crowded market, to create something that people want to flock to when they have so many other options. But there are lots of audiences looking for lots of different things. The luxury audience is not just one person or one type of person. Some people want like loud, fun, obnoxious YouTubers to watch. Other people want really low-key, calm, minimalist perhaps. Depends on your personality and what you like. There's room for all of us here. Some people who are leaving YouTube have also said that they're leaving because they're bored with luxury. And I think that's totally understandable. I have certainly felt that way. As I've been in this luxury community over the years, one thing I've seen that has become very clear to me is that the luxury handbag journey tends to have a pretty distinct start and end point. Have you guys noticed this? Someone will grow up without luxury or aspiring to luxury on some level. They'll start buying contemporary bags and then they'll get into a Neverfull or a Speedy and then they start exploring other pieces and ultimately they may get up to the Hermes, Birkin and Kelly. And at that point they feel like, well, I've made it as far as I can go. I've had all these experiences and it becomes less special to a lot of people. They become just bags and not things that get you so excited anymore. Or people reach a point where they've amassed a lot and then they decide I have too much, I wanna cut down, I wanna go more minimal. Or they just get to a point in their collection where they're comfortable and they're not really interested and 
anything else at the moment. And at that point, that's something that could be described as being bored with luxury. As far as the YouTubers go, a lot of us get bored or burnt out because it's a lot of work when you take it seriously. I've talked about this before, so I won't repeat all the different steps and all the time that it takes to create videos every week, but it is a lot especially if you are really taking it seriously and you're researching and you're staying on top of things and trying to pull topics that are of the moment that people will want to hear about. And most of us at some point feel like, oh, I, I just don't wanna do this anymore. But if you're serious about your channel, you're serious about growth, you push through those things because you know that that is a normal process in any business or any passion of yours. You get really excited, and then you get bored or you get frustrated or whatever it may be or something's not going right and you push through that and you get to the other side. You don't just give up and leave. Although I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with giving up and leaving, I will say that I had something instilled in me from childhood that you don't give up on things. And I struggled with that for a while because there were some things that I should have given up on and didn't. Or things that I knew I should give up on did give up on them but then felt a lot of guilt about for a while. And I have learned that it is okay to give up on some things when you know that it's okay. It's okay to say no to some things, but it's an important point to make, I think. Giving up is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's the best thing. I would also say to the people talking about boredom and luxury and saying, well, my audience is leaving because they're bored with luxury. That may be true, but you have a new audience coming in. This is a cycle. It has a lot to do with age, I think, that a new generation is always coming in. A lot of us are around the same age, I guess, and if not the same age, we've been through this part of YouTube the last many years together, and we may forget that even though we're at this far point in our journey, that there are people just starting, and those people are about to go through the whole journey themselves, so Personally, I want to be here for that. I want to use the, I won't say expertise, but the knowledge that I've gained over the years and share that. Another reason I've seen for leaving YouTube or for the waning interest in luxury YouTube is that posting all these luxury videos is insensitive to people who aren't doing so well with the recession, the current economic times. To that, I again agree with what Connor said in his video. You'll have to go watch that to see what he said. But for me, I feel like if you have worked hard to get to where you are and to get the bags or whatever else that you have, I don't think you should have to hide that. I think if someone else has a problem with you having something and using it, that that's their problem, not yours. Now, I think in some cases, you may not want to carry those things or wear certain things. And I won't give examples. You can come up with your own for that because people have different ideas about that, where sometimes it's maybe distasteful. But in general, it's not. Luxury is doing well. Luxury, I read an article a few months ago that luxury tends to thrive in times like these. And even if there are a lot of people who can't afford luxury anymore, or never could, a lot of those people still aspire to it and still want to have it at some point in the future when they can and they're still interested in it and still wanna see videos about it because it's an interest of theirs. I would also point out that when you're wearing something fancy, can we please keep in mind, I think most people wear it because they enjoy it. They're not wearing it to flaunt it to other people who can't afford it or choose to put their money in other places. And there's so much judgment around that and it's so misunderstood and the different topic. I would also say if you are a YouTuber with a luxury channel and you are struggling with growth, I've been on here a while and my channel is not the most successful in the world, but I feel like I've done well with it. I'm very happy with it. I'm proud of what I've done. And I feel like I have a lot of insight that I can offer, especially to smaller YouTubers because I've done so much research and I do treat it like a business. And one of the things I can offer now is that when you see a YouTube channel in this luxury niche, explode. First of all, that's very rare. The channels I see grow really fast tend to be two things. One is the person whose channel it is tends to already be wealthy or at least have more money than most people. And they can afford to buy things all the time and post unboxings and hauls constantly. Most of us cannot afford that, so we can't have a channel that grows because of that. The other thing I see where channels explode or grow very quickly is that that YouTuber has something very unique about them that draws people in. For example, channels where the YouTuber used to work for a fashion house and they reveal that and they start giving insider information. That's not something that every 
everybody can do because we haven't all worked at the fashion houses so we don't know all the ins and outs of that we don't know all the little secrets and the things we wonder about they actually know for the rest of us however this luxury space on youtube is a relatively small space on youtube even though there are lots of youtubers that have channels right now our channels tend to most of the channels in this space tend to grow very slowly. So if you are a YouTuber who feels like you're struggling with growth in this luxury space, just know that that is normal. The ones who grow really quickly, that is abnormal. If you are posting content steadily, consistently, you're paying attention to your analytics and you're using them, you're creating more interesting content, not what everybody else does, you can do some of that here and there. But trying to come up with something new that nobody's talked about yet, or giving a different perspective Perspective on luxury. Those are the channels that will see that steady growth. And of course you also have to pay attention to the quality of your videos, the lighting, the sound, all that stuff, the editing. It's time consuming, it takes a lot of effort, but if what you're going after is growth, and you don't want your YouTube channel to die, these are the necessary steps. So now I want to hear from you in the comment section below. What do you think of luxury YouTube dying? What content are you seeing that you're just sick of. You don't wanna see any more videos like that. What content do you want to see more of? Let me know in the comments below. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next time. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.